Cardio for basketball. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategies. I don't know how to be sane. I got way too much ambition. I keep on being statistics. How would I be denied? My only option is winning. I'm crossing the finish line. Hey. Today we're talking about what to do if you're out of cardio shape for basketball. You want to play basketball, you're trying to play basketball, but every time you do, your lungs burn, it's hard to breathe, and your heartbeat feels like it's going a million beats per minute. Obviously, in that state, it's really hard to play an effective game of basketball. And I live in Michigan, so seven months out of the year, I'm forced off of the court because of weather, and I'm primarily an outdoor basketball player. So every spring I find myself trying to get back in cardio shape for basketball. And whatever reason you're out of shape cardiovascularly for basketball, the bad news is there are no shortcuts here. There are no hacks to getting in cardio shape for basketball. It all boils down to hard work and effort. But there is good news forthcoming, so let's get into it. There's a cliche about getting in shape for your sport and it's a cliche for a reason because it's perfectly true. That cliche is in order to get in shape for whatever sport you're doing, you have to play said sport. But the question today is what is there that you can do off the court to supplement getting into shape as quickly and efficiently as possible? The answer to that is of course to do off the court supplemental cardio. There are two major factors that go into getting into cardio shape. The second factor kind of directly leads into the first factor that we're about to talk about, but it's super important nonetheless and we'll get there in a minute. But first of all, the first factor to getting into cardio shape fast is consistency. Nothing beats consistency. You see, when we're out of shape, especially cardio shape, it's because our body is not used to turning on the systems that it needs to use in order to be a high-performing athlete. When you're out of shape, your body's not used to pumping large amounts of blood throughout your entire body in large volumes at a high pace for prolonged periods of time. The same thing with your lungs and oxygen. And your body's probably not used to sweating profusely because of those two things. Once you are in shape, now your body is used to turning on, used to using those systems. And the feeling of being out of shape, that difficulty doesn't come from your body actually using those systems. It comes from it trying to turn them on and then start using them when you're out of shape and thus your body is not used to turning on those major systems. It's very physically intense for your body to go from not using those systems barely at all, like in the off season, to then having to turn them back on again day after day and using them to the efficiency of what you're asking your body to do. So essentially getting back into shape is a matter of teaching your brain to train your body to become a high performing athlete day after day. In order to do that, your body has to turn on those systems on a regular basis, day after day, going through that physically intense process. The fastest way to get your body used to doing that is by doing it consistently every day. You have to teach your mind to train your body that we, as a mind-body connection, are a high-performance machine. It's our routine, it's our process, it's our lifestyle, it's what we do every day as a high-performing athlete. That is a daily message that you need to send your body every day. Build that consistency. The more you do that, the faster you get into shape. Now it's time for the good news. The good news is that when you're doing this, a lot of people think to themselves, I gotta get into shape. I wanna do it as fast as I can. That means like, for instance, I haven't done anything for X amount of months or weeks. 
tomorrow I'm gonna go on a five mile run and I'm gonna keep doing that until I'm in superb shape. The good news is you don't have to do that. You don't have to exercise, put in that kind of cardio for that long of a duration or that high of an intensity. It's not about the duration of time that you're putting in. You don't have to put in 45 minutes or an hour. It's not about the intensity. You don't have to be performing at 80 to 90% of your maximum capable output. So you don't have to destroy yourself, torture yourself to accelerate the process of getting into cardio shape. I would say in terms of duration, the bare minimum that you could get away with in terms of how much cardio you're gonna be doing is a 10 to 15 minute warm up and don't skip the warm up. Do not skip it, do not lessen it. Keep the warm up the same every day. Don't skip it. And then in terms of the actual cardio you're gonna do, whatever form it may be, it doesn't have to be running or anything like that. It can be swimming or hiking or, or, or rowing or whatever you want it to be, whatever form of cardio you're doing, do that for 15 to 20 minutes and then have a five, 10 minute cool down. That's the bare minimum I think you could get away with that's going to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of uh, accelerating the process of getting back into shape. Now you could do more volume for a longer duration. You're allowed to, you can, it may help you, but I think you don't have to do much more than what I just described in order to get the maximum uh, time and speed boost out of trying to get in shape as quick as possible. And in terms of intensity, you don't have to go absolutely as hard as you can. Remember, it's not about how hard or long you're doing this supplemental cardio. It's about turning on that system of high intensity effort that you're putting your body through. Teaching your body, getting your body used to the process of just turning those systems on. Those systems don't have to run for a long period of time at a high intensity. They just have to turn on, run for a while at a moderate intensity, and then they can be turned off again until the next day. So if it's running you're doing, okay, do the 10 to 15 minute warm up, do the 15 to 20 minutes of actual cardio, and while you're doing that cardio, you should put in as much effort as you can, but that effort is all about pace. You wanna keep the same pace for that entire 15 to 20 minutes, meaning you don't wanna to have to slow down and walk, you don't wanna to have to stop and take a break, you're going as fast and as hard as you can, but the whole idea is to maintain that pace the entire time. So even if that pace feels slow to you, that's fine. What you want to focus on is maintaining it. That pace will increase, you will get faster, the better shape you get into. But you're not going to get into that shape as quickly if you're constantly slowing down or taking breaks throughout that 15 or 20 minute window. You wanna keep the same pace that entire time. That's the fastest way to get into shape. So that's the good news. You don't have to go super long, you don't have to go super hard, but you do have to be consistent. The second main component of getting into cardio shape quickly is enjoyment. Now, in order to be consistent, you're gonna to have to enjoy the cardio that you're doing. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it and you're not going to repeat it. So it doesn't matter what kind of cardio you're doing, as long as you continue to do some form of it on a daily basis. You don't have to do the same thing over and over again. You do whatever you need to do as long as what you're doing, you enjoy it. But also, you don't only have to enjoy it. Ideally, you would also get a feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction from doing it as well. I've talked about before about how I run every day as my form of cardio. But after I've done my run for the day, I have a feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction that I wouldn't have had had I not done the run because I know that I did something difficult that I didn't have to do, but I did it anyway, and I did it to the best of my ability for that 15 to 20 minute window, and I got it done, I accomplished it, and that resonates enough with me so that the next day, I'll be able to do it again and have that same feeling. So ideally, you would enjoy it 
and have that sense of accomplishment and success, but you really only need one or the other. The main thing is that whatever you're doing, you do it so that you can repeat it on a daily basis and get something positive out of it every time. So if you want to increase your cardio for basketball as quickly as possible, the best thing you can do is find supplemental off-the-court forms of cardio that you genuinely enjoy doing and then allow that enjoyment to fuel you and motivate you to repeat that cardio on a daily basis to build up that consistency. Lastly, I just want to touch on what do you do if you're sore and or tired from training the previous day. My general rule for this is if you can perform today with about as much as 90% as efficiency and effort that you put in yesterday while being sore and or tired, then go ahead and put in that cardio for that day. If you are too sore to do what you did yesterday, then either find a different form of cardio to do today, or if you don't have any for other forms of cardio that you like or want to do, say if your form of cardio would be running, and you ran yesterday and you're sore today, and you're sore enough to the point where you can't run nearly as efficiently as you did yesterday. Well then make today a low intensity day. So instead of running because you can't because you're too sore, walk instead. But the key with low intensity days when you're doing something that's cardio based but at a lower intensity is you want to do it for long enough so that you really build up a sweat from doing it. So at least you're engaging that system for that day. Still do that low intensity thing as well as you can. So if you're walking, walk as fast as you can. But the, the main thing you wanna focus on for those low intensity days when you're too sore is that you wanna at least build up as much of a sweat, get a good sweat going so that at least you're engaging that system on that day. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, if you found this to be good information, then please subscribe to this channel. I say, I've been saying for the last few weeks, this is a small, obscure channel. We talk about weird, obscure things that not many people watch on YouTube. And so anybody that does subscribe, make sure to know that I genuinely appreciate it. Also like, share, hit that notification button. When you hit that button, you're always notified whenever any of my videos go live. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys next week. I'm number one. I put myself in a place where nothing can top me. I feel like I'm space. It's bigger than profit, but still I get paid. My thinking colossal, not minimum wage. Talk to the laws like I know the way. Stay on my job like who need a break? It wasn't possible. I heard him say, but I'm like MacGyver to all my mistakes.